everyone, and welcome to the Wings Radio Program, where we hope that you will be uplifted and motivated by what you hear tonight. If you would like to join other listeners in the live chat room, go to www.wingsofprophecy.com and click on the live chat tab. Now here's your host, Glenda Lomax. Good evening, Blog Talk listeners. Today is Thursday, October 11th, 2012. And tonight I'm going to be continuing the Spiritual Warfare and Breaking Generational Curses series. We're going to be talking about fear. The spirit of fear, assignments of fear against your life and your destiny, and just fear in general. Before I get started, I want to mention one thing. I had... uh, mentioned previously that I was adding a store page to the Wings of Prophecy site uh, where I was going to list the books and the CDs. Well, in checking further into that, uh, that is not going to be the route that I'm going to be going. That's going to be much too complicated for me to get into for various reasons. So um, those of you who are interested in the Spiritual Warfare CDs, I do have those in now. I have two of them so far. I have signs of demonic affliction and I have how demons gain access to humans the CDs are in slim jewel cases and they are shrink wrap they're professionally duplicated CDs Um, they're going to be free to anyone who gives a gift of um, five dollars per more for a CD for each CD and you can just email me and let me know what you're interested in doing or how many you'd like to have. Now, these CDs are free to anyone who is incarcerated who is allowed to have CDs because they don't have access to the radio programs. So um, usually anything that I have, as long as I have them in hand and can give them away, anything that I have will generally be free to people who are locked up and can't get them for themselves. That's just kind of a general rule. Now, that doesn't mean I'll be able to send it out immediately. If I'm short of funds, then I can't, and I will put them on a list until I can. But they are always welcome to send their request, or you can send the request for them. Not all jails and prisons allow CDs. So uh, if you have a request for someone who's incarcerated, please check to be sure they can have that item uh, before that item is shipped in to them before you request it. And otherwise, though, I'll be happy to fulfill your request. Okay, so if you want the CDs, I have a limited quantity. I have How Demons Gain Access to Humans and Signs of Demonic Affliction. I also have The Hope and Loneliness Show together on one CD. Um, And I have about the same quantity of each one of those. I only ordered 100 of each one. So email me if you're interested, and I'll email you back, and um, we'll get those out to you. Okay, tonight we're going to be talking about fear. Very interesting how I ended up talking about this tonight. This was not my plan. Um, I got a prophetic word through my very good friend, Rosalind. Y'all have seen me post about her, and and you've heard me talk about her on this show, Uh, Prophetess Rosalind Thomas. She is the real deal. She has prophesied uh, over me several times, and every single time she has been completely accurate. She's a true woman of God, and her ministry is uh, www.learnaboutheheavens.org. And she ministers strongly in the area of personal prophecy. So if you're seeking a word from God, please go to her site and uh, email her because that's what she does. And she's also a mighty prayer warrior. And the Lord spoke to me after she had prophesied to me the first time. He spoke to me to give into her ministry. So I know for sure it's good ground. But she sent me a prophetic word uh, yesterday morning or it might have been the day before. And she said, you're supposed to teach about fear. I think I had mentioned in an email I didn't have a subject yet for this week's show, and I was praying, asking God what it was. And she sent me this email. Well, in the meantime, I had prayed, and the Lord said, the subject you're supposed to teach on is in that book you've been reading on warfare. And I said, okay, Lord. And then I get this email, and I'm like, okay, I'm not sure what's going on, but I I prayed about that too. And she uh, shared some of her notes from a previous sermon that she had preached and said, here, you're welcome to use my notes. Well, I've never preached from anybody else's notes, but... So later, after midnight, I finally get time to crack open the book and see 
you know, if I can find what it is God wants me to teach. I pop open the book. It's at the beginning of a chapter, and the chapter was about fear. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I guess that's the subject. So I prayed, and the Lord said, I'm going to give you some stuff, and I want you to look at her stuff and put it all together. And that's and I'm going to show you what to teach. So the Lord did give me some uh, some information about fear, and there's some very... Uh, good things that are going to help you combat the spirit of fear and understand what fear comes to do in your life um, when it's on assignment from the enemy that I want to share with you. Fear is a very big problem. Uh, Fear is a stronghold. When it gets into your life and stays for a long time, it's a stronghold. It can come in a number of different ways, and it will keep you from doing what you need to be doing for the Lord. It will hold you back in many areas of your life. I personally believe it is one of the main weapons of the enemy. So uh, my thanks to Prophetess Rosalind for sharing your notes with me. Her notes are extremely good, by the way. Uh, She's had a lot of seminary training, so she's very knowledgeable in uh, all the areas of the word. So let's get right into this. What is fear? Fear is, by definition, a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger or evil or pain. It's a feeling of being afraid or it's a dread or terror or fright. And there are all kinds of fears. I mean, uh, Rosalind's research turned up over 300 unique phobias. And Phobia comes from the Greek word for fear, and it refers to a panic that is completely out of proportion to the perceived threat behind it. And of course, fear can lead to escalated anxiety, and it can lead in its worst forms to just full out panic attacks. And y'all, years ago, in my early 20s, when I was in that real bad marriage, I had panic attacks, and they are horrible. They are so horrible. They make you feel like you're going to die when you have one. They are so awful. So there are a lot of different kinds of phobias. There is right now one of the really prevalent things. uh, I know among Americans, I don't know about other countries, but among Americans, there's a terrible fear of aging, of growing older. Did y'all know that it's very common now for people in their 20s to say they don't want to live past the age of 35 because they are so afraid of growing older and not looking beautiful and desirable. That is a fact. I've talked to many of them. They all express the same thing. I was so horrified to hear that. That was unheard of when I was growing up. To be in your 20s and say, I don't want to live past the age of 35 because I'm afraid I'll be old and ugly. That is so sad to me. There are so many advantages to being older that you you hear about from some people who who have aged gracefully and none of us wants to look different I mean we'd love to look like we're 25 our whole life but the truth is you trade youth for wisdom and there are a lot of benefits to having wisdom y'all and there are some things about growing older that are really nice that are peaceful that are um that bring you great contentment. It's not all bad like the media portrays it to be. Um, There is a fear of becoming homeless. I've dealt with that one after almost becoming homeless. I had a terrible, terrible fear of becoming homeless after that happened uh, for quite a while. Fear of rejection. We see that one a lot, don't we? Uh, Fear of being alone. There is a fear that will mess you up. That fear will mess you up. It will make you stay with people that will make you wish you were alone, y'all. Fear of failure. Fear of success. Some people fear success as much as they fear failure. Fear is not always a bad thing. Um, Fear is a safeguard. It's used to keep us within particular boundaries. Having a lack of any fear and being just completely fearless equals having a lack of wisdom. If you've ever seen anyone that lives just completely without restraint and has no fear of anything, no fear of authority, no fear of just anything, no fear of God, there's just a real lack of wisdom there. 
um, a lack of fear of God is a terrible case of ignorance because if you know God you will have some reverence and some fear there a healthy fear that you know what he can do so fear helps us set boundaries now Satan tries to pervert fear and give us so much that he gets us to build walls out of it instead of just drawing a line with it and making a boundary he wants us to big build big walls of fear he wants walls of fear between us and our destiny so he doesn't have to worry about us walking in our anointing he wants us to have walls where walls shouldn't be walls that keep other people out of our hearts and out of our lives or fear that locks us inside the walls with people who mean us harm because we fear being alone more than we fear being abused people that are locked in with us who have even more fear than we do only their fear manifests as control and manipulation did y'all know that controlling and manipulating people are operating out of fear that's a fear based behavior set control and manipulation always comes out of fear fear of lack of control generally stems from some area in their lives when they had no control and the fear came in your fears when they're out of proportion will drive people away from you that you're trying to hold on to you cannot expect other people to spend their lives trying to scale your fear walls because you won't let go of all that old stuff and all those worn out phobias and get free it's exhausting to try to love someone whose heart is locked inside a big vault I'm talking to somebody you've got walls around your heart so thick nobody can get through them and you keep crying out to God saying why can't anybody love me and you're the reason why they can't because you refuse to let go of the walls God's saying tear down those walls right now tear them down I did not put those walls around your heart Satan did it's I'm talking to a female A young woman, you've been searching for love. I say young, you look young in the spirit. You have been searching for love and you've been crying out to God, asking him where your partner is. And that's he that's why your partner's not come. He can't get over the walls. You have to let the walls down. You have to let go of the fear and trust God. You cannot trust people, but you can trust God. And it's important that you do that or you will spend the rest of your life alone, he says. Satan is trying to scare the saints away from their destinies. If he can scare us away from our destinies with various fears, whether our destiny is linked to another person we're supposed to marry or our destiny is linked to doing something that we're afraid to do, whether it's go minister in another country or get up on a stage and speak, Satan wants to scare you away from that and make you think you can't do it because if you can do it and he knows that you can because he knows God will empower you then he knows that you'll have an anointing to do it and he knows that is going to do him some harm so he's trying to scare you out of doing it he's trying to cheat you out of your destiny by bluffing you with lies and what ifs are you going to let him do it he tried to do that to me too he tried to tell me as I was writing The Wilderness Companion that that book was going to bore everybody to tears. He tried to tell me that when I started doing radio that I would mess everything up I tried to say and it would just be a big mess. He's going to try to scare you with stuff too. If he hasn't already, he's going to. You know, fear, there's a lot of spirits in the nest of fear spirits. There's fear, panic, anxiety. There's a spirit called terror. I've encountered that one. That's no fun. And, and then the worry and fretting spirits come in with that, where you just sit around and worry all the time and fret, you know, about things that usually never happen. Most of what we fear never even comes to pass, y'all. Fear enters any time there is abuse or trauma that's not the only way it gets in 
but that is one of the ways it gets in. And when those things happen at an early age, then fear will come in and set up a stronghold if it's not dealt with right away. And children rarely know how to deal with fear. I like something that Rosalind had in her notes. It's a quote from Max Lucado's book, Facing Your Giants. Focus on giants, you stumble. Focus on God, your giants tumble. I really like that. Focus on giants, you stumble. But if you focus on God, your giants tumble. All the Goliaths just come tumbling down if we set our mind on him. Another way that fear enters is when we entertain the lies of the enemy. And that's one of his favorite ways to get us. Like fear of the future. Fear of the end times events. Fear of the tribulation. I get a lot of emails about that one. And I used to fear it too. But here's the bottom line. God's either faithful or he's not. The word says he's faithful. Everything I've seen shows me that God is faithful. Everything he's taken me through, he's taught me. I'm faithful. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to come through. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. God is faithful. When we fear, we're telling God we don't believe he is faithful. We're telling God we believe more in the devil's ability to bring to pass what he's whispering to us than God's promises. That's why fear is such a big deal to God. That's why he keeps saying, fear not. Don't put your faith in the enemy, saints. Don't put your faith in him. That's what God's saying. Believe in him. Fear is one of the enemy's favorite tactics to delay and derail the saints. God will fulfill every promise he's ever made to you if you will just trust him and believe. There is not one promise he will leave unfulfilled if you obey and if you trust. I'm seeing things come true God promised me years ago to the T. I mean details tiny little details that some of them I'd even forgotten about. And I'm seeing them come true. It is amazing to watch knowing these prophecies that, that were spoken over me or things that God spoke to me, mostly things God spoke to me himself years ago. And seeing them just manifest is so incredible. God is faithful, y'all. Fear enters with unforgiveness this was a new one to me when I started studying this I hadn't seen that before if you go to Matthew chapter 25 and you read the story that's the parable of the talents remember the guy with just one talent that hid it in the ground starts at verse 24 then he which had received the one talent came and said Lord I knew thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw there's the unforgiveness and I was afraid there's the fear and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo there hast that is thine and what did the Lord say to him? His Lord said, answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Fear enters with unforgiveness. And when I saw this and got the revelation of it, I realized why I had cast out the spirit of fear and it kept coming back. If someone has abused you or hurt you, physically, verbally, or any other way, and you have not completely released that and forgiven them, that spirit is still there, and it's not leaving until you do, because it doesn't have to. Can I just tell you that? That was a huge revelation for me, because I kept saying, Lord, I just cast that spirit out. It was back two hours later. Why was it able to come back? Why? There's something holding it here, and I need you to tell me what it is. I prayed that prayer last week. And I believe this is the answer. And I believe that he has shown me the areas where I have unforgiveness. And so I'm diligently working on those multiple times per day because that is very serious in God's eyes. And I will not play around with that one bit. Not one bit. I didn't even know I had it. 
you have to find yours too. It's there somewhere. If you've cast out the spirit of fear or you've been through deliverance and it's been cast out, especially if it's been cast out more than once, like I'd cast mine out more than once, and it keeps coming back, there's a reason why it's coming back. Either there's unforgiveness in there or you are continually entertaining fearful thoughts. The devil's bringing it back and he's just getting the door open again. Now you've got to figure out which one it is if you want to be free. The wicked servant, you know, the unforgiving wicked servant in the parable of the wicked servant was handed over to the tormentors. When we don't forgive, we're handed over to the tormentors too. And fear is a tormenting spirit. Make no mistake about that. Anyone who's ever suffered it for any length of time will tell you how tormenting it is. It is no fun. The enemy does not want you to have this information on forgiveness. Fear is a snare. There are many scriptures in the Bible that link fear with, with a snare being set by the enemy. If you go to BibleGateway.com and put in two words, fear and snare, it'll bring up a list of scriptures where those two are connected. And I'm not going to read them all to you in the interest of going on with my message here, but let me tell you how bad the enemy hates this message. When I started making these notes last night, the demon it's immediately started attacking me with sharp pains in my head. Anytime you have sudden sharp pains like that, it's usually demonic. I don't get sharp pains in my head. And I knew immediately what it was, and I just prayed, and, and the Lord must have sent an angel because immediately it was taken care of. Satan doesn't want you to know how to get out of the snare he's, he's got you in, that he set for you. He knows your potential far better than you do. And he's managed to delay you this far. He don't want you to get free now. If there is an assignment of fear against your life, it has been sent to delay or derail you from the destiny that God has for you. At the very least, fear will steal your joy. We know the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. When your joy is stolen, that's where it's gone. I mean, he came and got it. And fear will drain you of your strength. You know, weak warriors don't put up much of a fight, do they? You're not going to fight back very hard if you're all, you know, all the strength is drained out of you because you're trembling in fear over in the corner there. Fear comes to make you reverence Satan's power more than God's and steal your faith away from God. Reverence and respect are real close to worship. Are we going to worship Satan's ability to do us harm? Or are we going to worship the God of all creation and all that's living? You know, we have to decide that. When he gives us a chance to fear, we're the ones who have to decide which one we're going to do. It's up to us. So, how do we get rid of fear? I believe that the answer can be found in two scriptures. One is 1 John 4.18 There is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear because fear of torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And the second one is 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, did you notice that said he hasn't given us the spirit of fear? The spirit of fear and the emotion of fear are not the same thing. Emotion of fear, you can have that can be the healthy emotion of fear or the fear of God. Spirit of fear is demonic. And you can tell the difference because the spirit of fear torments you. And the fear that comes from God does not. The natural fear does not. Okay, so let's talk about love for just a second. If perfect love casts out fear, and if God has not given us a spirit of fear but of love, then we need to 
replace the fear with love whenever the fear shows up. So how do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, we need to know which love we're talking about. If you're facing, let's say that, um, let's say that someone I'm close to comes at me with verbal abuse and they say something really mean and hateful to me. Okay, at that point, maybe I'm afraid because I've been through abuse before. Maybe I'm afraid. Maybe I feel fear. I can receive that fear or I can remember this scripture that God didn't give me a spirit of fear. He gave me love. And I can turn that around and love them in the face of this abuse. I have a friend who's in a marriage where she's unequally yoked with someone who is verbally abusive and pretty belligerent towards God. And she shared with me recently in an email and gave me permission to talk about this, that that is her method. I'm not going to give her name. But that is her method for dealing with that verbal abuse. And she said the more love that she pours out, she can see the demons flee by watching his eyes. And he calms down. I remember a time during my marriage when I was in my 20s and I was trying to go to church and I was trying to find God. I just mainly found church, but I was trying. And I was trying to walk in love and, you know, do everything right, follow all the commandments. And I remember times when my husband would be verbally, my ex-husband would be verbally abusive like that. And I would answer in love. And I remember it did calm him down. And I believe based on this scripture, based on what I experienced and based on what she uses to fight that thing that she's in now, because the Lord has told her to stay put and trust him for the result. I believe that's the answer. Return love. Don't receive the fear. Don't let it enter. When someone does something bad to you, something abusive or verbally abusive, or somebody is listening right now and you're going through this very thing, the Lord said, if you'll take this method and apply it, he's going to help you out of that situation. He said, if you will submit to me and apply this method, I'll get you out of that. I'll get you out of that marriage. I don't know who you are, but you do. So let God's love work through you to that person. Let me tell you all something about warfare. There are two things that the enemy has absolutely no defense against whatsoever. And one is humility and the other is love. Just pure love from God. He has no weapon that will fight either of those. We need to trust God for the outcome when people hurt us. And it's really hard to do if, if they cut us really deep. And I promise you I speak that from experience. When someone betrays you at such a deep level that you weep for days or weeks or months because the pain is so bad and you just can't believe that that person that you loved so much turned on you like a junkyard dog, it's really hard to answer in love. And it takes someone who is completely submitted to God to hold their tongue and do that. It is a fight every day, every minute of every day, in fact. But if you can do it, the rewards are amazing. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Okay, so let's talk about power. As I believe that the, the whole solution of the spirit of fear is in 2 Timothy 1.7, more than any place else. I do believe that uh, 1 John 4.18 about perfect love casting out fear is the confirming scripture for this. Let's talk about power. Our power is our authority in him. It is our authority to use the name of Jesus and the power of the blood. It's not by our might. It's not by our power. It's by his spirit that these things are defeated. It is by our submitting to him and resisting the devil and trusting the Lord with the result. We need to stand in the authority that we have, but we need to walk in God's ways as we do it. Walk in love. Walk in humility. 
when you're being attacked and the spirit of fear is trying to enter or you're being abused and the spirit of fear is coming at you if there's any pride in you it's going to jump up and want to fight back and if you fight back you're not walking in humility and so there's one of your defenses right there blown away and if you receive the abuse instead of answering in love then you're not walking in love and there's your other defense blown away and then the enemy's going to come in with all those fiery darts and they're going to land and they're going to hurt when you answer in love if you spend a lot of time worshiping the Lord it gets easier and easier to do this y'all when you answer in love and your mind is stayed on him you're, you're walking around in an attitude of worship and praise that stuff rolls off you like you would not believe people can say hateful things to you or be abusive to you and you just look at them but you see that it's not them you see that it is coming from the enemy and they're just the weak flesh that it's working through and that's what you have to remember when he comes at you with fear through a person is it's him not the person it's the enemy and he's after your destiny and it's up to you to stop him so stand in your authority but walk in love and stay in humility if you want to fight this especially when it's coming through a person when it's just the enemy whispering lies to you you have to learn to recognize it as the enemy it's not God if you feel that fear rise up in you that's not coming from the Lord that's a spirit of fear and you have to fight it like a spirit you have to rebuke it you have to refuse it replace it with the word in your mind if that's the only scripture you can think of is 2nd Timothy 1 7 quote it the enemy comes up he's whispering oh you know you're not going to get through the end times you're not going to be ready or this or that or you know so and so is going to leave you or whatever whatever lie it is that he uses on you you're going to lose your job you're going to be homeless whatever and you say no no devil I rebuke you in the name of Jesus the Lord has not given me the spirit of fear and I'm not going to receive it from you either he has given me the spirit of love and power and of a sound mind let's talk about the sound mind you know what the sound mind is the sound mind is the mind that is renewed in the word of God the sound mind is the mind that steps back and says okay is that really likely to happen you know because I you know I spent the last five years worrying about this such and such and it never happened look at the reality we're all afraid of things that we don't know we're all afraid of the unknown that's a human nature tendency is to fear the unknown but how often does it really happen what you know the imaginations that we have that you know such terrible things yes there are hard times coming yes there are judgments going to fall yes there are you know the tribulation and all that stuff but the Lord has told us over and over and over again his glory is going to arise on his children he's going to provide for his children he's going to protect his children until it's time for you to come home we just need to trust him that he's got our backs and if we need to prepare if we need to get ready he'll lead us to do that in our spirits we'll have a strong feeling that we need to do that or if we don't have any money to prepare or anything like that he'll bring us whatever we need we can trust him because he's watching over every single one of us if he counted the hairs on your head come on y'all okay so if abuse or trauma comes at you through a person the first step is answer in love immediately forgive immediately do not let unforgiveness get in there or you'll be stuck with it for years it's not fun love is your shield if the enemy starts whispering lies to you remember that fear starts rising up in you that's the enemy that's not God that is not God that is the spirit of fear and you need to answer it rebuke it in the name of Jesus rebuke the spirit kick it out of there and replace it with the word God has not given me a spirit of fear but of love and power and of a sound mind devil out of here with you in the name of Jesus do not listen to the enemy's lies Psalm 23 4 I will fear no evil for thou art with me God's with us we don't have to be afraid 
Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment I shall condemn. Come on, y'all. Load your weapons up. Luke ten nineteen says, God's given me all power over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Come on. You've got stuff to fight this back with. you got to fight it, though. The first thing that you have to do is realize the difference between the emotion of fear, which is the healthy fear, fear of God, or, you know, fear that if I go rob a bank, I'm going to be locked up for 20 years. That's a healthy fear. That's the boundary-setting fear. But the fear that rises up within you and makes you shake with terror, that is the spirit of fear. That's the demonic. That's from the enemy lying to you. That's the one you need to get rid of. That's the one you need to rebuke and quote the word to. If you keep your mind stayed on God and in walking in God's will for your life, that alone will overcome a lot of stuff. If you will walk in love and humility, that alone is a form of warfare, and it's strong warfare. The Bible is full of fear nots. Fear not, Abram. I know I just told you to go into this land where nobody knows who you are, and I know you just tied 10% of everything you own, but Abram, you don't know it, but I'm fixing to make you a rich man. Fear not. Just listen to me. Trust me. Fear not. Fear not. You have a big destiny. Stop being afraid of it. Just step out. Fear not, Joshua. Go into that land and take what I already gave you. I already gave it to you. It's yours. Go get it. It belongs to all my children. Fear not, Peter. You won't sink if you won't fear. But fear will sink any of us, won't it? That kind of fear, the spirit of fear, it wants to sink us. Fear not, my child. It's only Satan trying to scare you away from the glorious destiny that I have for you with a bunch of hot air lies that I won't come through for you. But you know me. You know me. The Lord's saying, you know me. Why are you listening to the enemy? I'm talking to somebody. Why are you listening to the enemy, he said. Why are you listening to him slander me? Those are slanderous lies. When I came to Texas in 2009, when God sent me here with no job, very little savings, and for 10 days, I don't even know what, day, what town I was going to, and I'm sitting in a motel with a U-Haul that's already overdue, and they're texting my phone every day telling me the U-Haul's late, and they're charging me late fees. I was so scared. I was trying so hard to walk in faith, but two different times I just had a complete meltdown where I just sat there and cried because I, I was like, Lord, did I hear you? I was sure I heard you. You know, people were starting to say, no, you made a mistake, that you need to turn around and go back, you know. And The enemy knew that God was up to something. And he knows that your anointing will come if you overcome the fear and stand boldly face to face with the fear and stare it down. When we stand in faith and we refuse to fear and we walk forward into our destiny anyway, big things happen. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Esther 4.16 She stood and stared that fear down and she trusted God and look what she accomplished. Her faith saved a people. It saved all the Jewish people because she was willing to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm afraid, but I trust God more than I trust this fear. Which one are you going to trust? got to think about that because you got to trust one or the other your fear or your faith you choose but your faith is wherever your trust goes that's where your faith is do you trust the devil for the bad outcome or you trust God for the good one and we make those choices every day y'all I'll tell you something I would rather perish trying to do God's will any day of the week than live only to do my own because I've lived that life and it was garbage 
That's a word for somebody. You're trying to live your own will, God said. You are trying to live your own will and call it his will. He said, I'm not going to bless your mess. I don't know who you are. But you know that word's for you. God said he's not going to bless that mess. You know better. He said, you know that sin. You know, T.D. Jake said, ships only sink when the storm that's going on outside them gets on the inside of them. We can't let the storms of fear get on the inside of us. Satan hates it when we stare down fear. Because he knows. He knows if we stare down fear and we keep stepping forward into our destiny, our faith is going to prove God's faithfulness. And Satan fears that. Because that's where the testimonies come from. Y'all remember that scripture in Revelation? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That's the overcomers. And whenever one of us overcomes and the others see it, they get strong too. They get more courage and they get more faith and they start stepping out of the boat behind us. The testimony is not for us. It's for our brothers and sisters. Satan wants to keep you cowering in the dark corner of your comfort zone. Make no mistake about that. Watching from a distance while everybody else you know steps into their destiny. He would love to keep you there. He's kept you there this long. He wants you to believe that stepping out of the boat is just for uh, other people. Really? What other people? Because everybody I've seen God use was just another ordinary person who chose to have faith instead of fear. Who chose to stare down the fear. The disciples were just ordinary people. Satan wants you to think that you're the wrong age, the wrong gender, the wrong marital status, the wrong economic class, the wrong background, the wrong temperament. Any excuse he can come up with to keep you from stepping out and doing what you know God is telling you to do. You know God's calling you. You know he's calling you to the ministry. And you're still sitting there. Why are you still sitting there? Are you going to wait until Jesus comes back and then go, oh, gee, I was supposed to do that? I mean, you know, when we get up to judgment, we don't want to, <laughs> we want to hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, not well, what have you done? Come on, y'all. Talking to somebody out there. It is the house that's built on the rock that doesn't fall in the storm. Not the one built on fear. It's the house built on the rock. And that includes the storms of fear, the storms of doubt, storms of every possible kind. The enemy wants to get you into fear, and he wants you to talk about it. You know why? Because we release our faith through our words, and faith in him grants him access to come into your life and destroy and derail and delay. His first goal is to get you into fear, and his second goal is to get you to talk and tell everybody how afraid you are. So you better watch out for that. I'm going to ask you one question tonight, and then I'm going to close this. What would you be doing right now if it weren't for that fear? Where would you be? What is the enemy keeping you from? Are you still crying out to God because your destiny hasn't come in while you cower in the corner in fear of the enemy's lies? That's why your destiny's not there. You know, if you're afraid to sow, you're not going to reap a harvest. If you're afraid to step out, you're not going to have a testimony. God will do his part. God is faithful, y'all. But we have to do our part, too. 
We have to do our part. We have to submit to him and his will for our lives and obey what we know he's telling us to do or what we know he's leading us to do. And then he'll do his part. He'll back us up. He'll empower you to do whatever he's called you to do. If he tells you to step out, he's going to provide for you every step of the way. Sometimes it's going to look like he's not because he's building your faith and he's giving you a testimony to tell people about. And it is scary. But you have to trust him. You have to trust him even if every five minutes you're on your face again. You have to trust him. And if you've read my book, you know I was there. I, <laughs> God would do a miracle for me. And I would be all excited for about 24 hours. And I'd be in fear for two days after that, waiting for the next miracle. But that's how he built my faith. It's a lot harder to scare me now. Because I've seen him come through so many times that nobody can convince me now he's not going to come through. They just can't because I've seen him do it over and over and over again. And not only for me, but for other people too. I am convinced of God's faithfulness. I know he is a faithful God. And I know he's going to keep his promises. He's keeping promises now. And he's going to keep them to you too, but you need to do your part. You are going to have to fight the spirit of fear when the enemy sends it to you. You're going to have to cancel those assignments of fear. If that fear came in on you like it did on me through abuse or someone verbally abusing you or control and manipulation coming through people, you're going to have to forgive them so that you can cast it out and be done with it and be rid of it. It's not any fun being tormented by that, y'all. And it's not worth it. We, can, we have to forgive regardless of what people did to us. And I know people that things that have happened to them are so horrendous that it makes me angry to think about them. But we have to forgive. Because people that do bad things to us were under demonic influence. It, You know, yes, they made the choice to give in to that. But it was still the enemy attacking us through them. So we need to forgive the person and just hate the enemy. Not hate the person. That's a word for somebody that's been living in hate. That hate will eat you up. It will eat you up from the inside out. You have to release it. It's not worth it. Unforgiveness binds us. It didn't bind the other person. The other person usually just goes on with their life after they hurt you. They don't care. It's going to bind you. And it will keep you out of heaven too. God's got a lot to say to his people tonight. No wonder the enemy didn't want me to do this show. Well, that's all I've got for you tonight. But y'all think about that. Learn to discern the difference between the emotion of fear and the spirit of fear. I hope that y'all have a great weekend. Thanks for listening. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in to hear Glenda Lomax on Wings Radio tonight. We hope that you have been encouraged and inspired in your daily walk with Christ. You can contact Glenda by email at wingsofprophecy at gmail.com or by mail at Glenda Lomax, P.O. Box 127, Princeton, Texas 75407. Wings Radio is a non denominational program and is not affiliated with any church or nonprofit organization.